Melody. Please. Greetings and welcome to Snarky Wizard, I am Cyan, and today we're gonna talk about Luna Nera by Netflix. This is one of those series that I don't know if it is good or bad, although I am pretty sure I will watch the next season. Let me explain this to you with an analogy. This series is like an old-fashioned chocolate chip cookie dough. It has excellent ingredients, but you didn't level the mold or tray, and some parts ended being overcooked and some are raw. Luna Nera has all the ingredients to be a fabulous supernatural series, but the final product is not what you were expecting. So let's hit the road and marcha. The plot. In 17th century, in a little town in Italy, a young girl named Ave and her grandmother are helping an upper-class woman to give birth when Ave sends how the baby starts to die inside her mother and in her agitation speak out loud her concerns. The mother and her household brands them as witches. A sacred society that hunted witches, the Benandanti, takes Ada's grandmother, leaving her alone in the world and in charge of her little brother, but also opening her eyes about the existence of real magic. Following her grandmother's advice and escaping of the hunters, she searched for a special group of women that preserved the portal between the living and the dead clothes in order to keep the world safe. These women are the so-called witches. How many secrets will Ada discover and what will be the price to pay for them? Warning, spoilers ahead. The good, good acting, nice costumes, a scenography, and beautiful special effects when magic is involved. I fall for the intelligent use of dark and muted colors through every scene. The story is intriguing and the characters are really likable. I love the confrontations of religion versus magic, of religion versus science, of magic versus science, of love versus obligation, family versus love, and obligation versus freedom. The chemistry between Valente and Leptis, who form a light bond because of their inability to use magic and their necessity to protect those ones that they love, was the most touching relationship in the whole show. The use of hidden clues, easter eggs, and other things like the names were a nice touch. I will explain this before the conclusion. All these scenes are replayed with pagan imaginary that is familiar and yet has a distinctive European feeling. It has good twists in the end. If we keep away, the old men are bad them. Well, at least they kind of let us know the hero will become a villain and she's a woman. <sighs> then they go for small mercies. The bad. The dialogues and interaction are lineal, convenient, and often bordered on the ridiculous. For example, Persepolis sneaking out and following Abe every time the last one wants to go away or do something rash was absurd. Or Persepolis' obsession with her hair was so meaningful. How that can be compared with the other stories as a traumatic event when they are telling you why they're being persecuted and the worst thing that this freaking girl had in her life is her hair? For real? Or what about the marriage proposals? I roll my eyes at this so many times that in one point I fear that I will keep my eyes in that position forever. Horrible stunts and fights. The worst sore play I have seen in the last 20 years. And I'm not kidding here. The actors didn't hold the swords in the right way. Their strikes were laughable as Adolf's. The Romeo and Juliet subplot was boring. The actors lacked chemistry. 
I was frustrated with the short life they give to the science and religion confrontation. They decide to abandon the most interesting part of the series in favor of the romance and drama, leaving you with too many questions and clever easter eggs that were wasted, like the names, the strigas, the use of oaths as a bad omen and their connection with the mass of the Benandandi, the pagan image inside the witch hideout, the serpents, the moon, the Italian folk. They put so many cool references and they leave them in their surface. They didn't go seriously in the theology of magic or the immersion in this fantastic world. It never gets too dark and never gets transgressive. They pass perfect opportunities to really make you cringe and shock the viewers and feel the consequences and dangers of being witches. Like when they decide to stop the burning of the witches or never show us the methods they use by the Inquisition to try to make the witches talk and confess. The ugly. And conclusion. The ugly. <laughs> too many agenda in the end. Your story cannot be transformed in something as simple as men versus women. And definitely, not all men are bad. And that is what happened in this series final episode. Yes, we have a new female villain, but this punch just lost power thanks to men are jealous of women's powers and they do everything to take this power away. Marcio destroying everything, even the woman he loved in order to obtain a power that was only made for women, which is ridiculous because he could also make magic in his transformation into a holy man show you how self-centered and greedy and and creepy this character was. Then we have the two young boys in love of the witches, at the end becoming Benandanti, and it was ludicrous. Pietro was angry because Ada killed his father, but suddenly forgot that his father killed Ada's mom first, and he was at seconds to kill her sibling, and then we have Spirito giving her back to the only constant in his life, and also becoming a hunter when he tells us in the other episode that the most important thing in his life is Persepolis. Come on. Then we have that Pietro suddenly became a misogynist figure and an ass to his adopted sister. This was so wrong, come on, she loved you, she defended you in a fight, helped you against her best judgment when you ask her for help to liberate or help your witch girlfriend and you dismiss her because of her gender at the end. Again, men are bad, men use you, and it doesn't matter how good you are, how many times you have proved your value. If you are a woman, you are ignored. And the last point of this was when the only male that was left that was good wasn't a male at all. Are you f kidding me? Before giving you the conclusion, I want to give you a glance of the potential of this series with the hidden gems and clues they use and then throw away. It's gonna start with the names. Ade, name of, has many etymologies, but the principle came from the Greek god Hades. And who is Hades? Hades is the lord of the underworld and the lord of the dead. So if we put this as a reference, we know that she wasn't the chosen one, the stronger one. She's an outsider, a necromancer, a person who controls and feels that. Martio. It came from the Latin Martius, that is a reference to Mars, a representation of the god of war and conflict, and we know this character wants a war to take away the power of magic. Valente. The name means a strong or the stronger, and, and as an adjective is also used to describe virtuosity, a nice trick to hide who was the stronger magical user among the heroes. Pietro is a parallel of the name Peter. And who was Peter? He was one of the defenders of the Catholicism, someone that denied Christ and his religion three times. And later, he became the first pope and the representative of this religion. And Pietro, the beginning, don't believe in magic or in evil, and in the end, he embraced the religion and these all beliefs. Now, Let's jump to the conclusion. In conclusion, it's reasonably fun binge, and I really, really hope that they change its tune, and they don't need to do much to do it. They just need to balance this grown idea that all males have to be evil, and they can accomplish this using a spirito. A spirito didn't lose someone beloved for him thanks to his girlfriend. He doesn't have a solid reason to hate witches, 
So they can change this plot if they put him as a double agent, someone that took advantage of what was offered to him and defend Persepolis and her group and give them info and show you that not all men are bad. Just put one good man there. One. I'm not asking much, do I? Just put one freaking man that do the correct thing. Well, that's why my class in the snarky take. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. And why not? Join us and become Geek Paladines. Adios. It's my idea.